Every business intelligence tool is going to expose you to aggregation in one way or another. So it's something that you need to learn if you're going to get started into the world of dashboards and reports. This video is going to be a crash course on data aggregation. And while I'll be using Dundas BI to explain it, you can pretty much apply these concepts to any business intelligence tool. I hope you enjoy this beginner's guide. And I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. Now, before we get started, remember that with great power comes great electricity bill. And moving on. In Dundas BI, understanding aggregation is the key to understanding how to work with data in general. It's the old problem of how do we drink from a fire hose? Most of the time, when you have source data that's just too much, it's all about simplifying the results to help you understand the data as a whole. Aggregation is simply the idea of combining these things so that we can get it into a bite-sized form that a human can understand. Let's start with a simple data set showing the raw data. I'm going to drag an Excel file into Dundas BI to get started. Just don't read too much into this data as it's just a silly data set I put together to show the concepts. I wanted something small so that you can see exactly what's happening. In Dundas BI, to work with data, we create something called a metric set, which is like a view from the source data to get a desired output. You can see that if we open the metric set for the raw data that we have on the screen, it has all the fields that our raw data table has included in it, including one that kind of acts as a de-aggregator. Don't worry about that one. Let's look at each column in our source data and see how we can aggregate or simplify these to make them more readable. Starting with the location column, you can look at that data and think about different ways that you might combine this column to simplify it. With this type of categorical data, there's not really much that you can do about it other than simply grouping similar ones. And grouping is exactly how we aggregate category data in BI tools so that we can see it more clearly. In the source data, we have five data points, but if I use it on a dashboard, you can see that we get three to help simplify it. A neat side effect of this grouping is that we can add a count measure so that we can quickly see how many data points exist in each one of these groupings. And that may be something that you're interested in visualizing on a dashboard for a particular visual. You can also have multiple groupings. So if you have two or more categories like I do, you can tell a system that you want to group by one and then group by the other. So it's nesting them together, depending on what you see. And of course, the order matters. Now moving on to the date column, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Just like categories, dates can be combined so that you can remove duplicates and group them together. But there's more that you can do with dates because they have multiple components to them, like the year and the month and the day part of it. You might choose to group your data by year, which is a great way to simplify your results to better understand what you're seeing. In more complex examples, you might even want to do something like group by the minimum or the maximum date. There's just more capability when it comes to dates. Now, last but not least, let's move on to the number column. When it comes to aggregating numbers, there's so much more that you can do because of math. Given the quantity column that we have, if you had to squish this down into a single value, how would you do it? I think most people would simply add up all the values and just give me the sum as one big number. And that's exactly what most business intelligence tools do by default. Now, here's the really neat part. Dundas BI provides a ton of math functions that you can use to aggregate your numbers. Check this out. If you click on the sum button, you can change the way that your number is going to be aggregated. And there's some super useful ones here. Min max, if you're looking for a quick understanding of the range of your values, maybe for a gauge, average, mean, median, mode, depending on if you need to understand the distribution. And these are really useful options to have because they'd be a pain to calculate if they weren't provided out of the box. Also, once you've chosen how to aggregate, you can aggregate over the groupings that we were just working on before. So if I wanted to see quantity by bears, no problem. It's grouping the bears, and then it's using the aggregator to define how we bucket each one of those numbers into those areas. So that's the concept. And as you can see, having an understanding of aggregation is insanely important to using a business intelligence tool, as it's one of those building blocks of knowledge that will really let you understand what the application is doing and why as you decide what data it's going to show. If you want to take your data to the next level using Dundas BI, I'd recommend digging into some of the videos we have on formulas, as they will allow you to take the aggregation that you do 
and apply more on top of it. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.